Hello, and uh, welcome back. Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, teacher, tinker, tailor, spy, all of those things, and cobbler. So, uh, well, I'm doing another drawing, and uh, the subject topic of today is uh, this um, kidney bean. This is like a baked bean, which I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm liking this sort of shape. And the character that we're drawing, or the character that I'm drawing, um, is this fellow here responsible for this? This is the the animator responsible for this um, actual beautiful film, which is called The Thief and the Cobbler. And there's a lot of controversy regarding this because, uh, you know, there's a lot of influences which uh, obviously Aladdin has uh, taken on. Um, and Jafar and uh, the evil wizard. So... Um, this, if you ever get a chance to watch The Thief and the Cobbler, you'll see Zigzag, this uh, incredible um, uh, evil wazir voiced by the inimitable um, Vincent Price. So, um, let's have a little look at uh, something else I've got here to show you. This is, I love one of those cartoons, as you probably know. This is uh, Roger Rabbit, so the animator responsible for Roger Rabbit. Richard Williams. Come on, let's get out of here before we get into trouble. There's a tradition of bulls in animation. Disney has done it. Fox Bunny has done it. And Richard Williams has done it. He's done a really, really cool job. Beautiful. All right, let's uh, let's go into the um, into the images. So um, let's go back to the sorry the Wikipedia page. Richard Williams, of course, is an animator, Academy Award winning. Um, he was born in 1933 and passed away last year in 2019. Um, he was a Canadian British animator, voice actor, director, writer, best known for serving as animation director on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, 1988, which he won two Academy Awards, and for his unfinished feature film, The Thief and the Cobbler, in 1993. Okay, so um, he's a really interesting man, and uh, he wrote this uh, incredible tome. This, this thing is called The Animator's Survival Kit, and in it, are exercises and um, uh, lessons on animation and this is a really complete uh, 2d animation experience so it goes from obviously you know drawing uh, timing 12 principles of animation um, different uh, exercises on on you know weight and pressure and acting and arcs and silhouettes and incredible stuff all um with richard's own um personal experience so from his own personal experience so these are lessons that are not wasted they're actually used by richard in in production so as i said i started with this sort of uh bean shape which i like this kidney bean i quite like that and uh i'm working from this is um this is richard and of course roger rabbit is a beautiful creation which he based on a whole bunch of different uh characters so it had a lot of sensibilities of uh of other um things that have gone before this is him uh in a in a in later life he's lost a little bit of here, of course, but you can see he's got this intensity and these eyebrows that arch up and this intense stare, which you'd expect from somebody that spends their life observing and uh, creating a beautiful animation. So I like this one. I love this, uh, the composition the, and the expression of, uh, of him in this, of Richard. This is him as earlier, in the earlier days. Um, and uh, this is actually, I think, the, um, where did I see that? Uh, maybe it's from uh, Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum or something. 
uh, in the end credits. I thought um, we might actually use this. This is in the 90s um, or 80s. So I thought I might actually use that because he's got the distinctive eyebrows that arch up over here and he has these, this intense stare, but he still has a, a quite a, a useful uh, face. So you can kind of see this sort of mysterious expression. So that's what I'm going to use. That's what I've sort of built on from this. I've taken the opportunity, of course, to take this uh, thumbnail and draw it up very quickly and roughly with brown pencil on the toned paper. And the toned paper is going to give us a little bit of uh, headway with uh, recreating a three-dimensional um, uh, drawing. All right, so let's uh, let's proceed. Let's get in there a little bit closer into into Richard's face. So I, like everybody else, fell in love with uh, Richard's work from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. When I learned animation, of course, everybody was uh, going on and on and on about the, uh, oh, you must see the Thief and the Cobbler. By the time I did see it, I was, um, I was already a fan of his work. But, you know, um, working in Sydney in the 80s, um, everybody, all of, the, all of the studios were um, very much into Richard Williams, although I didn't really know him. Uh, very very well he'd know his work his scope the reason why was because all of the stuff that he did in the studios in London were very very different so there was a lot of that hand beautiful hand-drawn um, uh, rotoscoping and uh, out here we couldn't do rotoscoping to that level I think they call it a four frame dissolve um, but there was a like a, a lot of buzz about his work in the 80s and and the 70s and um, you know so he was incredibly well known uh, in Australia and well loved and well you know and deservedly so too so if you see if you get a chance on YouTube um, you know check out his um, documentary uh, from the 1967 you'll be really pleasantly surprised um, he's a very softly spoken gentleman and I'm trying to get the the right sort of angle of course the this whenever you start to exaggerate things um, you move the goalposts in the game so to speak but at the same time you've got to establish something that makes sense so one of the things is lining lining elements up because you know, wrinkles and lines and any kind of contour, whether that be the outer contour of the shape of the outline or contours inside the face, they all have to have some form of, uh, they have to make sense. They have to sort of link up somehow. So let's try and do that because it's sort of creating, in a way it's creating a sort of a, uh, a linear dialogue and um, that's really important he's got a very open face here and um, it's just it's really purpose-built for observation and analysis those sort of Spock eyebrows that arching eyebrows up there they create this uh, impression of study and and you know scientific process and analysis and of course that's uh, that's very accurate for an animator especially one that is so in tune with the system so very uh, why is he important well he actually studied he employed a lot of the old old gang uh, who formulated the principles and worked closely with the nine old men in Disney. So there's a sort of a tradition that uh, handing down greatness and he cap captured it. Um, you know, there was also a lot of, they talk about this a lot, there's a lot of um, competition between them all, 
between all of the animators, of course. But um, he really uh, was able to get them at a certain time period and in a place in London um, far from Hollywood. So they were kind of more inclined to share their secrets and he was only too willing to practice and to learn from them. It's kind of a beautiful thing if you think about it. Otherwise a lot of those um, gifts would be lost. And uh, anyway, his principles uh, benefited both himself and his, his team, his production. And they're really well articulated in this book. So there's also a, a companion video series. You can go to the, check out the, um, the website for the uh, Richard Williams the Animated Survival Kit. There's a DVD series uh, of incredible lectures, um, which you can purchase. They're not cheap, but they're, in, they're very well worth the, uh, the price. All right, so I've exaggerated this into a bean shape, obviously. I want to try to keep that as much as I can um, and not go back into a more realistic shape because I kind of like the, the dynamics of this. And I think uh, once I put the little nose in and the, and the eyes and make sure that the eyes at the correct sort of angle, right, because the head's sort of tilted, isn't it, and rotate a little bit. So I'm going to be putting in a lot of the details back into this new area, this new shape that I've created. That's what I want to do. And we'll try to make sure I get that stare that he has. That really self-assured is a gentle stare. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, um, a gunslinger that, you know, a good, but the good guy. It's like the Gary Cooper gunslinger. Doesn't want to, but he knows he can outdraw it in the crook, you know. So that's where I'm getting the stare from. He has this uh, incredible ability. He knows it. He knows he's good. He's been able to capture distill magic in a bottle in a, in a way let's try to get this expression as closely as i can and we'll talk about the lines that i'm finding around here so they're evenly displaced um, forms which are a really good uh, indicator of a of a um, a pleasant temperament, I would say, and very even tempered. What can we do with that? Uh, I need to be very careful how much um, pencil I start to erode the. Uh, the quality of the grey paper, because I need to refer back to that. That's going to meet us halfway. 50% of the journey of creating the tone is to start from somewhere, and that's what I'm doing with the tone paper. Some white hairs here. Pencil's fantastic for creating hair. I've said that before, but uh, I really love... Um, using pencil to draw hair. You know, it can draw long hairs and short hairs and wayward fuzz. Fur, beautiful for fur as well. Okay, so here we go. I've put a little bit of a highlight there. Let's try to get something happening in the, uh, in the eye. I'll continue on a little bit. Keep in mind that we're going for a perspective and a tilt here, so we need to 
make sure that that is relevant and and correct. All correct and accounted for, sir. Here we go. So he's got a lot of skin on the upper lid. So this uh, area, which is full of muscle, also collects a lot of fat. And uh, that tends to smooth out the, the form and, um, and create this sort of like a, uh, an awning that comes down over the eyes to protect it. So that gives us uh, a really good expression as well because he's looking up, he's, it shows more sort of uh, intelligence when you're looking from uh, looking up rather than looking ahead or looking down. So it shows a bit of curiosity and I think um, pathos, a little bit of pathos there. So let's try to get the right amount of pathos in our drawing if we can. This is, these are the folds of the upper eye, even though he has a lot of flesh on the top. Um, and that flesh, obviously, with age, gets more active. So if you look at this, there are a lot of fine lines here. So that uh, tissue has uh, shrunk, right? So it's the same amount of tissue where it was puffy before, in his youth it is now thinner and more sort of structured, so it gives these incredible articulation lines, it's sort of like little arrows that point into the eye itself. So that combined with the muscles around the eye um, give a very striking effect. But we're not going to, for that age, we're going for the, the Roger Rabbit age, so that's uh, you know, but it's important to know what happened before and happened after, isn't it? Okay, let's get into the eye shape now. Let's see if we can... I have to match the <laughs> left and right, um, both in the direction, in the, the position on the sclera, on the eyeball. Because of course, you know, they're, they work in pairs, they're twins. It's got a lot of um, the lower part of the iris showing, uh, which of course, you know, again, a testament to the fact that he's looking up from, uh, you know, slightly. we going to have a talk about the uh, mask zone, so-called. A lot of um, portrait artists, caricaturists, cartoonists, etc. But he's sort of focused on creating a, a likeness. This is nice. And a lot of muscles here. We'll talk more about the, the forms, the pulling and pushing of forms around the face. It's really uh, magnificent. So there's a lot of um, activity going on. A lot of muscles which denote um, a life spent um, performing. And you might think, what do you mean performing? Well, as he would himself attest, animators, good animators like him, are more or less acting with a pencil. So, it's important to um, refer to <coughs> your acting ability. Your acting ability is only as good as the, um, the muscles that support that activity. And there are a lot of uh, muscles that support that activity in Richard's punan, Richard's face. Okay, so that's good. And we'll see we're keeping the bean shape and everything is 
is um, appropriately forming in the correct proportions and areas. So um, this zone here, which is what I like to call the mask zone because it looks kind of like a Mexican mask, open face mask, or a pattern. So it's like, like forms a sort of a T which captures the eyes and the nose and also the mouth, right? Because lines tend to um, relate to one another in some form of um, gestural uh, rhythm and movement, okay? So because all of the muscles have a connectivity and they all have independent movements and muscles that are pulling on them so to contract and to and to um, expand and that is for not for uh, evolution well it is evolution let's face it it's not for uh, protection against uh, injury or light uh, damage it's for communication so it's uniquely the same amount of muscles as say a chimpanzee but used profoundly differently so you know the um the the species sort of has a uh, uh an anatomical similarity as do all uh, mammals let's face it that's why they test on white mice in the laboratory because of the similarity between the mammals but um there's a profound difference in social um uh in in how people how the the uh, humans um, interact and communicate and part of that communication method is with the face so the face and the body body language and face facial language right so for an artist drawing you're not being a camera you're not a camera so you're not capturing something that um, is um, invisible to the eye you're catching something that is only visible to the eye over a specified time over a time period you know uh, photography only captures like a one four hundredth of a second or one two one twenty fifth of a second so it's not really intended to capture these long um uh you know expressions but an artist can that's what artists do Um, you know, most artists refer to more than one photograph, for example. And, uh, you know, when you're drawing, when you're doing a drawing, because you're trying to get something that is different to a photographic process. It's something that is almost uh, invisible to the camera. And that's sort of this, uh, this narrative, this uh, story of the face itself. So there's a lot of stresses and strains and micro expressions and things which are really not um, they're really not visible to the camera so I'm using that sort of a nice crosshatch effect to create a little bit of help from the uh, the toned background a little bit of form so I'm bringing it out slowly and taking my time right so now let's go down to the bottom end of the bean so to speak and see what we can uh, we can work out now I don't want to move to there's a lot there are quite a lot of shapes here but I don't want to move too quickly into describing those shapes just in case it changes the the um, hierarchy that I'm establishing right there's some strong muscles here the lower part of the face Yeah, that'll do. 
that's good. So if it, I like variety, you know, like sharp straights and curves, a combination of um, using both those those elements. I think it creates a sense of variety in drawing forms, which I find really interesting. So you try to get some of the character of the shirts and the waistcoat in here. Um, bring some of the shadows back. So. Lighting-wise, we've got uh, a light that's coming in from this angle, from the top right, and it's creating a little bit of shadow. And um, we've also got like a there's a fill light coming in from this side as well, which is softening that shadow. So these are things that we can play with with the. Um, you know, with the white pencil later on and pick them up. Okay. All right, let's go back over here. Excuse that noise, my dog's having a, a play upstairs. They get loud if they come down here. We'll see. This is ears very normal. Ah, does listen. So his ears are very clear shell shapes, shell like shapes, you know, the capturing ability of sounds. Good animation directors work beautifully with sound. They can hear, you know, sounds in the pencil stage. They hear the voices, they pick the right sort of voices and music and, um, you know, other it's kind of um, supplementary narrative elements to the drawings themselves. So let's get a bit of length happening here and sideburns coming down. It's going to be grayer down here. And going to do with this. So, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's good. And bring that up there. I'll fix these with a black pencil in a minute. So the black pencil's there really to uh, highlight uh, just, you know, the contrast, sort of pick up the contrast a little bit better. Okay, let's go. Zoom out a little bit, find the rest of the reference for the body. Just uh, remember to paint that uh, waistcoat black. I think it'll be good. Okay. Rolled up sleeves. I'm going to break the convention here and having to draw through the forms to create the rest of the elbow. I'm just going to guess because I'm going to rush through this part now. Let's see if I can. Now, 
when you do a caricatured head, when, whenever you do the hands, show the hands, they have to be a interesting size because hands and faces have a very close relationship with one another. So you don't want to make them too small. And you don't want to make them too big either because the emphasis is really on the face. Okay, we'll fix that up with the highlights. Okay, it's the white shirt there. Continue through there. I'm just going to do an animation board. See if I can make this work. Um, I'm going to get rid of that other hand up there from the reference. I think we're just going to create something simple. Just put the shape of the disc underneath. So far, so good. Let's clean up this uh, ribbon area a little bit better. There we go. That'll do. Take out some of the pencil. Right. Now. Let's get into the uh, black pencil. We're going to pick up some of these um, contrasts here. So go back into the eyes. And I'm going to ignore the highlight for a moment because I need to get that pupil nice and round and, you know, left and right relevant. Okay, so I think that might work all right. You go a little bit uh, size-wise, you know, smaller on the right because of perspective. So that's fine. So YouTube has a... Um, a series of the uh, Thief and the Cobbler, which they call it. Um... Sorry, I can't search that. No, that. But I can search by title. <laughs> Actors, yeah. No, thanks, Siri. Um, so the series, not Siri, but the series uh, of um, films are broken down into different parts and segments. The whole film is uh, is is there in a in a form a reconstituted form. I think a director's cut. I think you might call it, um, which I was showing my students uh, snippets of it the other day. It's very interesting, um, and even by today's standards, you know, uh, it's it does stand the test of time. It's a very interesting film. And of course, you know, Vincent Price, I think. I don't think I've ever seen a better performance from Vincent. You know, it's just sort of like almost a caricatures, a, um, not a caricature, a, what's the voice caricature? The Impressionist's Dream. So it's sort of like an impression by the man himself doing a Vincent Price impression. That's how wonderful it was. And of course, you've got, you know, Richard's penchant for moving perspective and, you know, um, working in ones and twos. Um, 
the the, um, the drawing. So if, if uh, just for those that don't understand that terminology, it um, refers to the number of drawings per second. Um, so, for example, there are 25 frames in a second, you round it off to 24. If you were to draw on ones, there are 24 drawings every second. If you're drawing on twos, you're drawing 12 drawings every second. So every second of movement equals 12 drawings. There's 12 drawings to get that, that movement. All right. So if you draw on ones, which means there's some, a lot of uh, detailed um, action, which um, the Vincent Price character has, beautiful hand movements, um, then they're done on ones. And, you know, it took a long time to do that, but it was a labor of love. Eventually, the studio had to, they had to take it off him and uh, finish it because it was just... Uh, It was being gazumped by um, Aladdin. And Aladdin, in many ways, was a, almost a homage to the cobbler, thief and the cobbler. And, you know, I mean, the um, Jafar is based on Thief of Baghdad's uh, Jafar, um, Conrad Veidt, uh, but also I can I can see, you can absolutely see, you know, uh, Richard Williams, Vincent Price, as well. Cool. All right, so the black pencil can use, you can use that for, you know, stronger lines, to establish more weight on those lines. Um, and it also can sort of, you know, create more contrasting um, tone. So it helps the uh, brown pencil a little bit more. There we go. Get the roundness happening down here that's good some beautiful shapes happening in his face really a, you know I've been watching um, a lot of his documentaries and uh, his his um, animate his talk his lectures animated survival kit lectures and he's so generous with his learning you know his process and you know I think that's very inspiring um, for me, as a, as a teacher, it's very inspiring. Here we go. Cool. Now we're going to go over to the left hand side now, so we need something probably to lean on. You can see that the black pencils helped very much with uh, the brown pencil underneath, so it doesn't seem to be so harsh and cold in, in color temperature. It has a warmth, which is really, you know, if you're drawing faces or animals or something, living things, um, it helps to have that, uh, that red or brown um, color. Um, yeah, I've actually done a little bit 
too much here, so drag it back. Go back to the brown. Okay, here we go. Get this fantastic shape here, which is completing the beam form that I've picked. And there's the shadow. And I've got some nice things happening there, but I think we should build up more form. Remember, this is a fill light that's coming in on this stage. The main light, for this uh, picture anyway, is coming in from the right. Put a few little textual elements. Okay. Good. All right, so continue to the hair. So the thief and the cobbler use a lot of um, moving perspective, and that really uh, was the saving grace, I think, for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, because um, otherwise, you know, you, the, the tendency is to lock the camera because it made the animation integration with live action a little bit easier. Think uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. But um, it doesn't make it very interesting or natural because, you know, cameras have the uh, ability to um, move, uh, you know, with the action and um, live action anyway. So this is a way of creating a seamless um, visual language for the film that wasn't compromised by technique or process. And um, it was, you know, and rightly so he won, you know, two Academy Awards for it. But the, the, um, the upshot of it is that uh, he's an animation director, but he's a, he's a consummate director, a film director. And this is usually true for animation directors because they you know, they have a very strong sense of that uh, film language. Look at uh, Brad Bird for, um, you know, the, I think we 
mission impossible. Okay. It's a little scary trying to draw straight lines without a ruler, but Just take your time. It seems to be okay. So, here we go. Let's, I think before we go anywhere, we might try to fix up the highlights, um, sorry, the contrasts of uh, dark elements. And that might make it easier to create a um, a correct uh, impression of light and dark elements. Nice, I think that will work. Brush is just uh, helping with the the contrasts. And also, you know, the the ability to get quite easily thick and thin lines. So thick uh, lines sort of kind of denote um, roundness usually, which is important here. Oops. All right, so now this area here we're going to fill in because this is his waistcoat and it might be nice to pop the shirt out so the shirt looks more whiter, you know, it's grey paper. So there we go. So um, you make it white by the proximity of something dark next to it, right? Something Mrs. March, Mrs. Marsh hasn't thought of with the chalk and the ink. All right, so let's push on and uh, ooh, before I do that, ooh, ooh, before I do that, let's try to, this is a Posca marker, so we're going to try and get a, a nice, um, sharp, strong, highlight um, and possibly refer to the side light over here. I wonder if that's going to work. We don't know. Anything can happen. And often does. Very strong uh, reflected light in his eyes, uh, wet zones here and there. What else is there? It's a cheap bone in the highlight there. Try and get that uh, stronger rim light effect. Ooh, meeting up the um, the pen line a bit too much.
And even though there isn't that um, extreme light on that side, I'm just putting it in because I think it might help create a three-dimensional effect a little bit better. So far, so good. Um, yeah, so far, yeah, I think it'll, it'll probably work out right. Okay. All right, so the white pencil is going to help pick up the form from the grey paper underneath. And um, it's going to create a more of a sculptural effect. So whereas before I was putting in some of the extreme highlights to work to, uh, now I'm going to build up to those highlights by um, uh, drawing um, light in the form. So, you know, you're not using this to color in a flesh tone, you're just, the flesh tone is the gray, right? The shadows of the flesh tone are the brown over the gray, and the white pencil is just reflecting, it's just uh, uh, drawing the highlights. Right? The reflections, because skin, after all, has a, has a textural quality and some is shiny, some is, is matte, some is smooth, some areas are rough. So it has a lot of variety and uh, the more you're able to uh, represent that in the drawing, the more truthful the drawing becomes. Actually drawing drawing the texture. It's nice with the light catching the muscles and and forms quite well, I think. That's good. That'll do. Now I want to put the catch the light under the on the bottom of this uh, wrinkle, this furrow, this line, and also a little bit on the top of it. So that kind of gives you a three-dimensional pinching of skin, uh, which is good. Okay, here we go. Build up the bulge here. 
render it out just sort of gently. It's nice. I'll do. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a second. There's a there's something um, that isn't in the photograph, which I think would be kind of nice to put in. That's the cheekbones. So this cheekbone is quite a strong, strong bone. Feature in, uh, in the skull refers to the skull doesn't always um, strongly um, stand out in photographs. But uh, if you were to refer to it like this, just sort of subtly, it gives the... Um, the drawing a little bit more truthfulness to it because then you're referring to the underlying structure of the skull which is very important isn't it This is a Posca brush pen that I'm using here, which has an ability to feather. So you can create this cross hatching with the pencil and with the brush. They complement each other quite well. So we could probably stand a bit of light bleaching here and there. I think would be good. Just a touch. That'll do. Not too much. Just a little bit. Help it out. Also with this, I think I'm going to fix this paper up a little bit. Okay, uh, also there's some highlights on the hand. Okay, good. Now continue on. I think we'll soften this area a little bit. Um, you know what, this is, um, should be a bit stronger. The highlights here. That's good.
Okay, so I'm just uh, basically building up the tone, uh, helping the white and the black, creating that sense of uh, contrast a little bit better. Um, you know, there's some softer forms, rounder forms, um, shadows and reflected areas, reflective areas, sorry. Um, especially like in the, the beard or moustache zone, there's a lot of um, skin uh, tissue that's uh, polished by the action of um, years of shaving. So it's quite important to keep everything relative. I think it's quite nice. I mean, I could go a bit harder with the... Uh, the darks and the highlights, but I think um, I've, well, I've, I think I've said all I wanted to say with this face at the moment. So I'm quite happy with how it's uh, come about. Let's try and uh, create more contrast, shall we? Let's see what we can do. We've got a black Posca. Got a couple of black Poscas. Uh, it's a chunky one. We've got another one. Somewhere. <laughs> there it is. There we go. So these are acrylic paint pens, so they serve the purpose of, um, you know, colouring in the background, um, which uh, I've kind of established with this, this square, the shape behind the figure. So I'm going to try to cut in around the hair and the... Um, other elements, the contours, and just to make a stronger statement, a bit more contrasty. Yeah. Cool. benefit of this is also it um, dries really quite fast and beautifully flat so you know you don't want it to be shiny in this uh, this area because it's distracting it doesn't uh, reproduce very well okay so let's continue on to the valley of death. This um, gap that I'm leaving between the contour line and the, the background elements because they're both the same color. So if I was to swamp it, it would disappear. And I need to keep it because it's uh, it's quite important to the strength of that uh, of that shape. Shapes are very very important. It's the first thing that we see in life. It gives us a, a sense of um, purpose and uh, I think um, relative um, um, a, a, just a sense of uh, like a um, integration of shapes we see things that are familiar we look at clouds and see people's faces you know we compare people's faces to kidney beans or apples or oranges or something pineapples even um, 
sort of gives us a, a sense of the um, interconnectivity of uh, life and also a way of understanding it in the simple in a simple fashion complex um, concepts and images and ideas if you simplify them you know like this is a way of simplifying and exaggerating right simplifying the shape overall and then exaggerating by putting the details into a new context so let's write his name now Richard Williams. Right, so this is a nice uh, Posca marker. Posca markers are really nice because they can um, give you a nice sort of a, a strong kick. They don't react very well with a uh, pencil, so they, they tend to remain quite um, independent and strong. Uh, which is what you want in situations like this. Here we go. I'm missing something. I don't know what it is. Probably it could be some definition over here. Would be good. You know what? Um, Let's, let's be a bit sneaky and put in a side light. So these are things that make your life a little bit easier in creating three-dimensional forms. And um, it's important to keep it like you know, they're, they're meant to be contrasty, they're meant to be strong, but sort of keep a, a tail on them because um, too many of them, too many of these little white strokes uh, tend to uh, flatten the form, which is what you don't want. So this is um, very, very, you know, I'm so happy I got a chance to draw um, this subject, this is Richard Williams here, and uh, this is my Richard Williams, and do yourself a favor, and uh, please watch some of his work, if, if not, just YouTube him, and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. There's some lovely documentaries on him as well, which will be very important to watch. Okay, so this is Franz Cantor saying to you, I'll catch you on the flip side.